Yep, it's that time again. <laughs> so we have a, another Cybernet with a, a bad VCO block. So it's in a 79892 40-channel AM sideband radio. Definitely worth fixing these radios. VCO block would normally be right here because they're extremely good radios. Uh, yeah, like most of the old Cybernet sideband radios, they're really, really good radios. They had one one weakness though, <laughs> and that was the VCO blocks. Actually, you know, honestly, they they worked for decades, but uh, you know, these things are old now, and when they go bad, they weren't designed to be you know repaired. Um, they were designed back in the day. If it went bad, well, you just unsoldered it, slapped a new one in there, and on with life you went. Well, of course, <laughs> yeah. These haven't been made in God knows how long, so, you know, I've done videos on how to do this. I just thought I'd show, yes, it's another one, so I'm on my way excavating down through the, you know, cut the, slice the can down the sides, and then pop the epoxy potted block out. Um, I already have the uh, electrolytic capacitor here that's been extracted. That's uh, two parts that will get changed in this one, and there's two different VCO blocks. I think I've done two different videos. There's the small, small ones about that big. Uh, in most of the U.S. radios, they're green, and then you have these that are in the, uh, just a metal can with no plastic cover over them. But, uh, like I say, electrolytic caps out. Um, now I gotta do is dig down in a little bit farther, because the, uh, Veractor diodes in between that ceramic cap there and the electrolytic that I just pulled out here, so it's right straight down in there. So, a little bit more grinding away, and, uh, I'll have that out of there, and then we'll have another repaired VCO block and another working radio. Now I know um, this will fix the radio. No if ands, or buts. Because <laughs> a uh, customer sent this in um, didn't work. Just got it, apparently just got it on eBay. Got it for a good price. Um, and the first thing I check on, on all of these radios, because this is such a common problem, <laughs> that's what I checked was the VCO voltage. And uh, it was not changing. With the uh, you know, changing the channel selector. Um, now, surprisingly, it does actually work a little bit for about maybe three, four channels, somewhere around there. You can adjust the VCO voltage, and you can get about three to four channels worth of range. But by the time you've changed channels, you know, in three or four channels range, it's done change the voltage by like three to four volts. And it's either goes down to zero or it's maxed out. So yeah, it's it's got problems. Um, but like I say, they're you know they're a pain in the ass <laughs> to do what I'm doing here. This is a time-consuming process, messy process. Um, but you know, a little bit of determination, it can be done. Um, but the only two parts that ever go bad in these things, other than people cracking cores in them, especially the green ones that have that little hollow core, but. Uh, the only two parts that go bad in these are either the Veractor diode or the electrolytic capacitor. Doesn't matter which one goes bad; it's encased in epoxy. So you, you know, if you're doing doing one, uh, well, you can't really do the diode without doing the cap because you got to burrow in from this side. But uh, just replace both of them. Um, you know, I replace it with a commonly available NTE replacement. Works just fine in there. But uh, you know. Like I say, it's uh, now the other ones are actually easier because they're they do not have the smaller ones do not have an electrolytic capacitor in them, and the diodes right here at the outside edge. So honestly, you don't even need any rotary tools to get into those. You can do those with a, a razor knife and a pair of uh, wire snips. You can just kind of nibble away and get in from the side to that diode because it's literally it's like right there on the circuit board, right at the outside corner. But uh, these, yeah, it's buried dead in the middle. <laughs> they couldn't have made it any harder to get to. But uh, there you go. I just thought I'd show the pro progress on that. Then once I get it in there, I'll I'll show the cap and the new diode in there. And then uh, I'll get it reinstalled in the radio, and we can restore that then. Hey, so you can see we've got the radio up and it's working. Um, if you're not familiar with these, there's no clarifier on the radio. That's got advantages and disadvantages. Great in a mobile application because you're not reaching for the radio every time somebody's off frequency a little bit. It's right in the top of the microphone. The bad part is, if anybody ever loses the microphone, you no longer have a clarifier. <laughs> so what Midland did was 
This is actually, or was, the housing for a power microphone. This is the exact same housing. And this one clearly shows that, because the uh, aluminum cover is missing off the back. Now, if this was a power mic, there would be battery terminals on either side. But normally, there would be just an aluminum plate here with Midland and the part number on the back of it. And the aluminum plate's missing, so I have to make a new cover plate for this. But... Uh, yeah, like I say, that's got its advantages and disadvantages. I like it. Um, and if you ever are missing one of these, you can get a normal Midland power mic. You have to put the right microphone plug on it, but get a normal Midland power mic, or actually any power mic. You just need a potentiometer built into the mic. Um, gut the power mic components out of it. <gasps> Excuse me. And uh, you're just going to wire the the potentiometer up then is your clarifier for the radio. Now some people um, what they'll do is, is convert these over to four pin you know standard four pin Cobra you know Galaxy Ranger style wiring and they'll use like the RF gain control they'll repurpose that one as a clarifier it's whatever works for you but uh, the important thing here is we've got the VCO block back in you can see it right there so that's the one I just had out on the bench so it has the new aluminum electrolytic capacitor there, the Veractor diode right there, and that new ceramic capacitor right there. Um, I've got a set of test leads hooked up to it because I had to, had to set the uh, VCO voltage. So on these radios, the VCO voltage is set on channel 1 for 3.6 volts. I just got it eh, rough, rough rate at the moment. Actually, I can fine-tune that here. Take it down to 3.6 where it's supposed to be. Actually, that's one of those one of those things that doesn't need to be perfect. Um, now, someone may have at one point in time actually had this one cranked up some because they had uh, the extra channels, and a lot of times to get all of your extra channels, you actually have to increase your VCO voltage. So we're at three point six zero eight. So that's <laughs> really close within uh, you know eight thousandths of a volt of being dead on. So that's perfect. Um, so like I say, that's all it needs. Um, you know, it's not that hard. It's just time consuming, you know, <laughs> burrowing through all of that epoxy to get down in there to these components. Uh, so I'll pop that back out of the radio, put it back in a can. Uh, you know, these cans are made of brass. So, uh, once you get, what I'll do is I actually bend these so they're flared kind of in. I'll slide the block back up inside of it. I will repot that. Um, but slide it back up in here, and then I actually solder, because uh, like I say, this is brass, so it solders very easily, and just run a bead of solder down all four corners to basically completely re-encase it like it was before. Put it back in the radio, and if it ever needs to be serviced again, it'll be a lot easier. Um, someone can just come along with a soldering iron, desolder the corners, pop the block out. Now, I'm not going to repot it in epoxy. I'll use potting silicone instead. Um, so they can just take a screwdriver and flake that out, and if, you know, the electrolytic or the Veractor diode would ever need to be replaced again, it's much easier to get to. <laughs> so, there you go. There's another uh, Midland, uh, what the heck is it, 79 or 8? Yeah, 79. Eight, I remember the 892. I can never remember the first two digits because they actually made a couple 892 model radios. They had a 13-892. But anyhow, a 79-892 with a Cybernet chassis brought back to life.